Hey guys, it's Alex. Today, I thought it was a good opportunity now that the blower has been shipped back to Edelbrock to talk about knock sensors on the Fairmont or just Coyote Mustangs in general. So what are knock sensors? What do they do? And what are the biggest reasons we ask you guys to look around for false knock before we start desensitizing or messing around with the knock sensors at all. It's been kind of a subject that's been talked about a lot by other tuners, but I thought, especially on a swap vehicle, it's really important because coyotes do not belong in a swap vehicle like a Fox body or an SN or, you know, an old 60s Mustang. So a lot of people that experience knock issues, it's brand new to them and they don't understand why they should have to do that. You would be surprised the amount of people that do swaps but then want to ignore 90% of the things that makes a coyote work, like the front O2 sensors. Do you know how many times I've heard people say, well, I deleted the front O2 sensors. I'm like, okay, cool. This isn't a Fox body where you can just delete shit and it'll be semi-okay. Every sensor needs to work. Well, I just deleted the rear O2s. Okay, are you getting codes? Yeah, I'm getting codes. Are they circuit codes? Yeah plug them back in <laughs> and then you know a lot of it takes care of itself but let's concentrate on knock sensors only so knock sensors started becoming prevalent on Ford Mustangs in 2011 and up actually three valves had knock sensors but they were very stupid knock sensors like very dumb very basic and they didn't work all that well then the 2010 GT500 that's right the 2010 GT500 also had knock sensors it did not have wide bands but it did have knock sensors. So we could use them, but they weren't really that reliable. Then in 2011, the Coyote came out and it had very, very good, reliable, reliable knock sensors that we could actually say, okay, this is fuel quality that's an issue, or it is false knock that's an issue. Now, how do we determine which one is fuel quality, which one is, is uh, false? We can definitely let you know based on the data log and I'll try to show you what can cause false knock in a knock and sensor equipped vehicle. So where are the knock sensors? Right there. These are your knock sensors in Coyote Mustangs. Okay, so as you can see, they're placed on the block. So think about it this way. These guys are basically ears that are you know like an ear that is ba that is fine-tuned to listen for certain frequencies now what frequency is it looking for well right in here guys it's a combustion chamber right there see right there so anytime detonation happens meaning you have bad gasoline and you cause a little piston rattle it creates a certain frequency a certain frequency okay so these knock sensors are tailored for that frequency the problem with these knock sensors is they do a global thing so if you have an issue over here it's gonna pull timing everywhere it's not just gonna pull timing for that cylinder now in some of the older calibrations you do have individual knock sensor cylinder control but the problem with that is only having two sensors I wouldn't really trust that let's say you're having an issue with this piston well, it'll resonate all on this bank. This piston won't be able to really tell. I mean, I guess it, it'll do an okay job based on distance away from the knock sensor frequency because I'm sure they tune the knock sensor a certain way from Ford. But it is a global adjustment, meaning if that piston over there is rattling, it's going to pull timing from the whole car. If that piston over there is rattling, it's going to pull timing from the whole car. That's how it's set up from Ford. New Predator motors have four knock sensors and they are individual, meaning they pull from each cylinder depending on the frequency because there are now double the amount of knock sensors on a Predator motor. And I believe 20 and 18 and up Mustangs also have four knock sensors. So on swap vehicles, it's real crucial to make sure that the knock sensors are either properly pulling timing based on octane or if it's a false issue. Now this is the reason a lot of false knock things can happen on, on swap Mustangs specifically. There isn't a lot of clearance here. You see how there's just not, there's no room for error. I mean, it is super tight everywhere, especially in the back because these motors are wide and have huge cylinder heads because of the dual overhead cam design. Very, very tight. The other thing is on swap vehicles, what are people above 
all when it comes to swap vehicle. Cheap, that's right, they're very cheap. They wanna get the F-150 motor, they are cheap. So they wait, so what do they do? They get cheap headers. And you see right there, that's really good clearance in my opinion for an aftermarket header. This is an ultimate header. Basically that is the brand name ultimate headers as long as that's not hitting anywhere and causing what we call false knock you should be okay if you have a cheaper brand header like a bbk well there's a lot more room on this side look at this driver's side there's a ton of room so you really don't have to worry that much depending on header manufacturer on the driver's side so depending on the brand header the brand the kind of fuel you're running we can definitely tell what is causing the knock now how do you tell if the knock is false well what I notice on false knock is it knocks right away like instant meaning it's not even creating any RPM and on the run-up it is super high or on a shift meaning when you go a one two shift and it spikes let's say on the way on the RPM up it's fine and then you shift then the knock sensor spikes but then it tries to add in timing the rest of the way that means something happened when you shifted and it went Ur! and it jolted. So this car has solid motor mounts. This car has a blower that goes on top. Are we gonna keep the same sensitivity on a blown solid motor mount equipped vehicle than we would stock? Absolutely not. When you have a supercharger on top of this guy, it is creating its own frequency based on the belt pulling around an additional air pump because a supercharger is an air pump on top of an air pump so it makes its own noise so supercharged cars have different sensitivity for knock sensors so when let's say a Roush 15 and up Mustang the way they tuned their knock sensors was very old school but actually it made a lot of sense they tied a copper tube to the block and they fed it inside the cab and what the calibrators did is listen for audible knock. Yeah, they ran 91 octane and went wide open throttle and they listened for audible knock and back down the knock sensors until they can say, okay, it's false or it's real. Because if the blower is singing and making no noise, but the knock sensor is going off and they don't hear any audible detonation with the copper tube, they desensitize the knock sensors. That's how they did it back at Roush in 2015 and up. How do I know that? I was there, talked to a calibrator there, showed me the development vehicle, the test mule. It was very cool to see that thing equipped with a bunch of old school techniques and new school techniques. So that's the way knock sensors are configured. From the factory, they're a lot more sensitive than they are supercharged because you have to take a air pump into account so that these knock sensors don't pick up the air pump when there's an issue. Now I've also seen it where the supercharger having bearing issues causes the knock sensors to go off even after they've been desensitized. So that's another thing to look out for. But where would false knock happen on a vehicle, whether it's swapped or not? Well, these are the many places you can check. Number one, 15 and up Mustangs have an air conditioning um, line. And in that line, there's a retaining clamp. The clamp has a long stud and it can hit the primary tube if you have long tube headers. Look there first. If you have an aftermarket K member like this one, you gotta make sure it's not hitting anywhere funky and that the headers are clearing everywhere. And these headers from Ultimate Header do the job nicely. There is no movement that's going to happen because everything is solid. But if you had a rubber stock style um, engine mount, motor mount, it might rock over and hit on that side. That's why I equipped it with solid motor mounts, okay? So basically, you got to make sure that it's not going to hit anywhere. Now, the clamps. See these clamps? See that O2 sensor? that sucker might cause false knock if it starts rattling hitting if it's loose or anything luckily everything has about 3 8 clearance all the way around super tight driveline components like um let's say a transmission mount right super tight tranny mount if you have funny vibration harshness or anything rotating and reciprocating it might cause false knock now 
even after all of this goes down, especially on centrifugal equipped Mustangs or swap vehicles, you're gonna find that the way certain things mount just create a resonance that we can't account for and we can't really kind of ignore. So you gotta be mindful of that too, that sometimes if you mount a centrifugal supercharger that overhangs way in front of the motor like this, okay, that might cause some resonance that we can't account for. As calibrators, we'll just say, you have knock sensor activity, dude. We're not commanding that much timing. Matter of fact, we're not commanding any more timing that we would any other place. So there has to be something causing false knock. So it's up to you to remedy it. One of my customers, the way he remedied it was very actually um, straightforward. He goes, okay, Alex. He was actually, he used his head. If I have race gas or E85, tested and verified E85 in the tank, can we shut off the knock sensors? I go, thank God he gets it because a lot of you guys say that you get it, but you really don't get it. He gets it. He goes, shut them off. I go, you understand the risks. Look, you have to do a disclaimer, right? You have to say, you know, you understand the risks, right? He goes, yep, I understand the risks, but I'm going to run E85 and I'll check my plugs. And as long as we don't command stupid timing, because if you're a experienced calibrator, you should know what these cars can tolerate at what boost level and what they can't tolerate or what's safe for the bottom end to handle. So I just say, yes, sir. So he bought a return soft fuel system, put E85 in it, tested the E85 with a tester, and we're good. And the thing makes, I think, 800 plus rear wheel horsepower, and he's the happiest cat on the planet. But a lot of people don't do that, right? So now that's what we do in terms of vetting what the knock sensor is doing. Okay, let's throw race gas in it or octane booster and go wide open throttle. And if the knock sensor comes back happy, okay, you have bad gas. And they hate hearing that. They hate hearing that shit. They're like, bad gas? I went to Sunoco and got 93. All right, congrats. You bought chocolate milk for $3 a gallon, basically. Because just because it says 93 on the freaking, on the freaking handle does not mean you have quality, good 93 in there. We see it all the time. So the real easy way of testing if your knock sensor is if your knock sensor going off is false or actual based on gasoline, if you run gasoline, pump gas. And again, guys, pump gas is pump gas, not ethanol. Well, it comes from the pump. That's pump ethanol, not pump gas. So I say put some octane booster if you have 93 in it. And if the knock sensors go away, you got shitty gas, go get gas elsewhere. Oklahoma is insanely uh, uh, consistent in how bad the gasoline is there. North Carolina is good. Florida suspect okay so what else can cause false knock let's take a look at the engine bay and see what else can cause false knock in my experience we've already done all of the vetting meaning you put octane booster you put this you put that you know the header's not hitting anywhere and it's still causing trouble. well these guys well how can a catch can cause false knock well this catch can cannot it's mounted way the hell out of the way a lot of people see this they're like why'd you do that why don't you just attach it there and lay it over the valve cover or the coil cover? And, you know, like a lot of catch cans have a reservoir about this big, which renders them absolutely useless. And they just dangle somewhere. And they usually dangle right here. They tend to rattle. And as you're flying down the street, things are rattling. The car's moving. Knock sensors go, nope, no timing for you. That's another thing look look out for. But if you are on E85, guys, or race gas, you can ignore those. Now, you have to talk to your tuner. But if you're talking to me and you say, Alex, I'm going E85. This false knock issue has me absolutely beat. Can we desensitize them highly? Yes. Can we turn them off 100%? Yes. But it is up to you, you, you. If the car shits the bed based on other issues because if we know that it has high octane we know it's not detonating we know it's not rattling the piston based on bad gas or bad octane or too aggressive of a timing curve so we turn these guys off based on your recommendation saying you got pump gas in it or e85 and you're good to go good example this motor <clears throat> has three seasons on it three seasons so what that means is three years I've been running it two in the red car one in this Fairmont and a ton of street miles. Where are they? Uh, okay. 
my, my, my knock sensors are hooked to the harness, but they're off in the calibration. Now what I do sometimes is flick them on to see how bad it is, right? But I can literally unplug them from the harness right here, bye bye, and I'll never have a knock sensor issue. They are off in the calibration. It's been off since day one. It used to have a VMP supercharger on it. That thing made a whole bunch of noise. Yeah, I don't care what you get. Mine doesn't. Okay, cool. When you have a 20% and a 69 millimeter upper with a big 2650, it's gonna hum and make some noise. So I removed it. So when I put the Edelbrock on there, it put a 2.7 pulley and their version of a 15 or whatever percent. I just turned it off. Why? I'm an E85. I test my fuel all the time. I know I'm not going to get detonation on ethanol. Hopefully this video gives you a bit of better understanding of what the knock sensors do, what can cause false knock, what we as calibrators do and require to turn them off or desensitize them and when to do so. So if you're having false knock issues all over the place, this video might be able to help you not guide you telling you exactly what's happening, but at least help you understand why tuners say it's false knock and it is hard to chase down and is usually up to the customer to remedy a false knock situation or get on race gas and party and not worry about the knock sensors ever again. That's how I look at it. So thanks for listening, guys. Hopefully this video taught you a little bit about how the knock sensors work, what we see on the log to tell us whether it's false or not, and what to do about it if you constantly have knock sensor issues. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.